Hey everyone, it's Ben from board to bits and welcome to part 6 of our series on making a procedural mesh in Unity. Now that we're able to make a single quad in a procedural manner, we can start looping through a couple of loops and making an actual grid of these quads. So let's dive right into it. We're going to jump into our procedural grid script in MonoDevelop. And we're going to make a couple quick changes here. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to make our grid size public. So that we can actually change it now and kind of see our grid in action. The next thing we're going to do down here, what I've, what I've currently been calling make procedural grid, I'm going to refactor this, right click on the actual name of the method, go to refactor, rename, we're going to change this to, I'm going to keep it largely the same, but I'm going to say make discrete procedural grid. The reason for that is that we have really two ways we can approach making a procedural grid. The first is to have each quad be its own unique um, sort of shape with its own vertices such that no two quads are sharing vertices which is really useful in things like tile maps and when you're dealing with sprites where you want to be able to kind of texture quads individually. The other option is to actually have them all be continuous and kind of like a single quad will share vertices with its neighbors which is useful for things like landscapes where you want kind of a smooth motion of your um, of your shape or of your uh, model. But that's, we're going to start off looking at the discrete method and then we'll look at the smooth method following this. So we're going to rename this so that we can actually kind of um, differentiate our two methods. And you'll notice that when you, if you refactor it, it will also change up here in your start method for you. If you just rename it, you'll have to rename it up here as well. Next thing we can do, we can jump into our... Um, actual method and we see here right now that our vertices and our triangles arrays are kind of hard coded right now just to be able to store enough information for a single quad so we want to change that quickly. Remember grid size is what's actually going to tell us what the size of our of our grid is and that's just one dimension of our grid it's actually going to be two dimensional so what we need to do is we need to say for example we had a grid size of three that's actually a three by three grid so it's total of nine quads. So in order to do this, we're going to need to say grid size times grid size times 4. So now we're actually getting the number for a single quad times one dimension times a second dimension. Same thing here. Grid size times grid size times 6. And now that's going to give us enough room for all of the quads we need within each of these. Now if, say for example, you had it where you had a separate grid size X and grid size Y, so you could have non-square grids, then these would be grid size X, grid size Y. If you want to do that as kind of an extra credit, by all means, but we'll just stick with a square grid for now here. The other thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to, need to keep track of where we are in these arrays. Right now we're only dealing with four vertices and six triangle triangle indices for each quad so we're going to, need to keep track of where in the array we are so that we don't start you know covering up um, previous indices that we wanted to keep so I'm going to create two integers that will kind of keep track of where we are in those arrays so I'm going to say set tracker integers and these are going to be int v equals zero and int t equals zero. Now we can actually start looping through this set of um, code here and making each quad individually. So in order to do that I'm going to create two for loops. The first one I'm going to call for int x equals zero. x is less than grid size. x plus plus. So that will iterate through an entire dimension of the grid. And then I'm actually just going to copy this, paste it within itself here, and we're just going to change these to Y. Now you'll remember we are actually building this grid on the X and Z planes, but because it's a two-dimensional grid it makes more sense to say X and Y. What's just going to happen is that this Y um, dimension is going to pertain to the X dimension of our vector threes. It's a little bit confusing, but um, when we're dealing with two-dimensional arrays it's better to still just deal with X and Y. Now we can actually cut and paste all of this information into these loops so that we have the vertices information and the triangle information. 
Now right now we're only dealing with the first four indices of the vertices array. We want to actually go through the entire array of vertices which is actually going to be grid size squared times four. In order to do that what we're going to do is once we get to the end of a single quad we can iterate by four. We can add four to our vertices count, that V that we're doing here, so that the next set, you know, the first set, so the first quad starts 0, 1, 2, 3, we add four, our second quad is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, so on and so forth. So we can do that pretty simply here, just at the end of this particular um, quad that we're working on, we'll say V plus equals four. And then up here, we can just add V to each of these. So we can say V plus zero, um, v plus 1, V plus 2, and V plus 3. And actually for this one, because V plus 0 is just equal to V, we can delete that altogether and just say V. Now likewise, it's important to remember that this 0, 1, 2, 3 is reflected here in the triangles. So 0, 1, 2, and 3 should be the same actually. We want to add that V to these as well. So we'll just change 0 to V, and then V plus 1, v plus 2, and v plus 3. Because now we're associating each triangle with the current vertices, or, or um, kind of the section of the vertices array that we're in. Now likewise, triangles are going to work the exact same way, except we're dealing with six points of data instead of four. So we're going to simply add oops, t plus equals six at the end here. And we're going to do t t plus 1, t plus 2, t plus 5, and then over here, remember we did this kind of equals equals shortening here, so make sure you add your t to those as well. So now we're, we're populating our entire array, not just the first four and six indices of it. That's super cool. However, we're not currently populating, we're going to be right now populating the exact same information these four bits of information for our vertices on every single quad. So all that would happen if we were to play our, um, test our game right now, we would see just a single quad. It's actually um, however many quads we have grid size squared in one spot. We need to somehow be able to offset those by the cell that they currently are. So we're gonna create another vector three inside of whatever given quad we're working on. And I'm gonna call this cell offset. And then we'll simply down here, when we choose the position of our vert vertex, in addition to adding our grid offset, we're going to add cell offset. And I'm actually going to add that, and this is purely for aesthetic reasons, but I'm going to add it here. Oh, make sure we add a plus to that. So we have kind of a lot of offsets here now. I'm going to copy that quickly. We have a vertex offset, a cell offset, and a grid offset. And it can be a little bit confusing. Basically to understand, the vertex offset kind of defines the shape of any given cell. It's gonna, it defines how, you know, how far apart each corner is from the origin of the cell. Cell offset defines the position of a single cell. Grid offset defines the position of the entire grid. So I'm gonna add this cell offset to each of these vertices, and I'll save that quickly, oh, a lot of space here, for cleanliness. And now we need to actually define this cell offset. Right now we haven't defined it yet, and that's going to basically be defined. Whatever cell we're at, x and y, we need to offset the position of that cell. So cell offset is going to be equal to a new vector 3 the x value is going to be equal to x times the cell size. y is just going to be 0 because we're not actually doing any altitude at this point. And, what, and z, the z value will be y times cell size. Again, I say, like I say, it's a little bit counterintuitive, but it's because it's a two-dimensional grid on a three-dimensional plane. Or three-dimensional space. So we'll save that. And now we have everything we need in here so that we're actually creating multiple cells and positioning them based on their position in our grid. Let's jump back over to Unity. 
go to our game object, which we can actually name this procedural grid. And we see here we've got our cell. I'm going to return the cell size to size of 1. And our grid offset I'm going to set back to 0, 0, 0 for now just for cleanliness. Set our grid size to something larger than 0. We'll say 3 for now. Save. Now when we hit play we should see a 3x3 three three grid appear. And there we go. I'm going to kind of move this camera up a little bit. And we see our 0, 0, 1, and 1 and 2 because it's a 3, um, 0 based indexing, but you know, 0, 1, 2 because it's a size 3 grid, and 3 in this direction as well. That creates our grid. And like I say, these are now all distinct quads. They don't actually align, um, <clears throat> they're not sharing vertices. We can see that if I just quickly add, instead of putting these all at zero, if I put these at something like x plus y, and I'll copy and paste that into each of these y values. When we jump back to Unity and we hit play now, we see that even though something like this, vertice, this vertex here and this vertex here are technically in the same location on the x and z plane, they're not actually connected. They're not, you know, this isn't being bent down to connect to this. And that's because there are two different vertices for two different quads. If we wanted this to be a smooth slope, we would probably want, it would make our lives a lot easier if these were just, these quads were all sharing the same vertices. And that's what we'll dive into in our next video where we create a similar grid, but where all of the quads kind of share a common set of grid vertices. And so they kind of have a smoother shape and a smoother model. So in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.